about you. Do you want to see a comedy show? Seven beautiful comedians. Very witty. Guaranteed laugh or your money back. Comedy show. This way. For you. You want to see a comedy show? It's fine. Here, look, I'll tell you a joke. Woods green and hangs off the trees. Leap. That's our comedy show. Yeah. Go through that. Here we go. You want to see a comedy show? Comedy show. Okay. You want to see a show? Lovely jokes. So here we are in Bertolt Brecht's Zoho. With the oil buildings and the London fog. And we can almost hear Polly Peachum singing. Four is too much. Four is too much. And we can hear him singing. In the love house, while in Zoho, meet the hippies. You are about to witness the 10p opera, a tale of two sisters. Our story starts at pub closing time, deep in the heart of Zoho. Quiet now, for Jenny approaches the Salvation Army mission, her sister's last known address. But in this Doss's paradise, danger lurks in every shadow. Jenny is soon surrounded, easy prey for the careless hands of the down and outs. Yeah. So, saved as it were by the bell, Jennifer again ventures forward, her spirits borne up by the missionary's merciful zeal. By the harsh words of the matron, Jennifer runs off like a wounded animal into the fog and enters the grimy labyrinth of Zoho, the joy town. Meanwhile, at the middle of the maze, we find her sister, Dawn, already waist deep in the quicksands of sin, arriving for work at a dirty little cabaret known to timeout readers as the Comic Strip. Spurred on by sisterly love, Jennifer moves deeper into the jungle of the big city, her heart beating in her mouth. Have a nice day. Past axe men and junkies. This is really good stuff, you know. Look, it does it very easy. Past horse and woman flesh. Through dismal courts and alleys, peopled with sharks and harpies and whores, all getting rich in hell. Listen, we can still be party. Okay, nah, what's the matter with you? Cheer up, you're gonna be all right, okay? Hey, look at me when I'm speaking to you, yeah? <laughs> so Jenny steps over the corpse, leaving those nightmarish visions behind. She spies the friendly shape of a London bobby looming out of the night. Lost and alone, she reaches out to him, knowing she can rely on his help. Oh well, another illusion shattered. But in riot-torn Britain, can you really blame a young bobby on the beat for losing his marbles? An organ, terribly political again. Shine. You are. Sorry, love. You'll have to get it out to said. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm just the uh, guide for uh, Brecht tours of London. You see that? 
It's great, that, isn't it, eh? So these people making money out of looking like Marilyn Monroe and Humphrey Bogart. I look like a fucking East German playwright. I mean, what are you supposed to do with that, eh? We was gonna pay me to start a fucking camp party at Bert Addy, eh? Bert or Breck meets the smog monsters, it's not on, is it? Yes, silly bitch. And over here, we see the two eyes cafe, where Larry Pons first picked up Billy Fury and Marty Wilde and Vince Eager before naming them in bed. <laughs> <laughs> At last, Jennifer's courage is rewarded as she stumbles across the awful clue that leads her to her sister dog. That's my sister's dog. Uh, yeah, she uh, lent it to us. Yeah, come on, yeah, we gotta go to our cameras now, okay? No, wait, 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 don't you see that? Meanwhile, backstage, the sleazy, greedy club owners, Raymond and Paul, are counting their ill-gotten gains. Tony. Monkey. Giraffe. What is it? There's no toilet paper. How come there's no toilet paper in here? OK, OK. Are we ready to go? Is everybody in? Rank is away? OK, go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. Welcome to the comic strip. Um, now, as you probably know, the comic strip is a whole new concept in alternative entertainment. Um, my name is Lexi Sal, and I'm actually an alternative comedian. I'm not funny. The thing is, I'm non-racist, I'm non-sexist, so if you don't laugh at me, you're a fucking fascist shit bag. All right. OK, Martin Bormann, stag party. OK. I'm Jewish. Say it loud. I'm Jewish and proud. If that's all right by you. I mean, I don't want to get into heavy trips or anything, but... Um, <laughs> See, the, the only good thing about being Jewish, right, uh, apart from the free Jaffas, that is, <laughs> or if you're a Zionist, the ability to nick somebody's country because you were there 2,000 years ago. Oh, yes, political satire, yes! Uh, this is what we've come from Islington for, yes! <laughs> the only other good thing about being Jewish is if you want a day off work, right, you just go up to the boss and you say, uh, I can't come in tomorrow, you know, it's, uh, it's Flanneke. Or, uh, it's Roscoe Schachter tomorrow, you know. I've got to sit in the backyard with a pork pie on my head all day. <laughs> Fucking get up. Anyway, uh, this is, as I say, I've been filmed for Albanian television. So uh, I'm going to do some of the readings from the poetry of Ember Hoxha, the president of Albania. In Albanian, with subtitles in semaphore for the harder thinking, right? <laughs> ah, fuck it. So obviously now Albanians in tonight. Good! This fucking Albanian goes to the job of the building site, right? Cabaret? She'd think about me as the both my parents were in the Communist Party. I'll tell you the secret of Cabaret. Get, get the money in. in. Yeah, yeah, but to get the poppy in, you have that. got to be funny. Yeah, yeah then you're laughing. Concept. Because if you're not funny, spend, spend. then you're not getting the money in. And nobody's laughing. <laughs> yeah, it's a funny business comedy. Very serious business comedy. Um, but I, uh... Actually, I, I was up in Liverpool a couple of weeks ago, you know, and I was, I was actually up there uh, in Liverpool, eh, you know, um, entertaining the troops. And, um, they, they, they call me the rioters' sweetheart. Darling, you have no talent. That's what they said to Lauren McCall. That's what they said to Paula Stevenson. Do you think they gave up? No, they bounced back. <laughs> and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bounce right on up to the top. I'm gonna be so fucking Do you mind? We're expecting a call.
stand in front of the mirror when you was a kid? You did, didn't you? You'd stand there and just your junior wife fronts, looking at yourself, wouldn't you? Eh? Going, ooh, you're not nice than them dirty girls, you are. And you get some of your mum's lipstick, wouldn't you? You put it around your mouth and draw lines all over your body, wouldn't you? Yeah. You remember, you smile and I can see that you did, yeah. Yeah, you put lines, then you get your underpants, you put them up tight underneath your armpits like that. Yeah, your dad's crash helmet, you jam it on your head really tight, yeah. It's coming back to you now, isn't it? Hey, yeah. That's right. Big pair of industrial gauntlets, pull them on really tight. Big pair of fishing wellies, you get to the oxtail soup, you pour the oxtail soup in your wellies, you jump up and down, you bang your head on the wall, and you shout at yourself in Welsh, yucky da, yucky da, yucky da. <laughs> Didn't you? Oh, I think we speak the lines about that. <laughs> Look, look, I can't look, look, oh, oh. oh. How's the weather oh, in New York? Yes. <laughs> look, look. <laughs> what, 500 pounds we owe you? Make me famous, Dad? please make me famous, I can do it. All right, John, do, please. how are the kids? Oh. It's a funny old world, really, isn't it, eh? <clears throat> Peculiar. <laughs> Anyway, big enthusiastic build-up for the first act. For ladies and gentlemen, Arnold Brown! My name's Arnold Brown. Why not? And I'm a comedian with a cult following. The cult following me at the moment is the Hare Krishna movement. And I wish they'd leave me alone. I come from Glasgow. Why not? <laughs> you know Glasgow at the moment under the Tories, the deprivation, the two-year waiting list for people who want to vandalise telephone kiosks? <laughs> Last Christmas I went back to see my home place. The plaque still hangs bravely in the wind. 1936 to 1956, Arnold Brown was socially deprived here. <laughs> We had the other difficulty in Glasgow of my father being a teetotaler and the shame on Saturday nights of him being constantly thrown into pubs. Saturday night club in Kenner building one evening, reading the lighting up times in the original village, when a group of drunken revelers run by the window, singing a Glasgow street song I hadn't heard before. Oh, excuse I me, I'm not... Who are these people? I asked my mother and father. These people, Arnold, are the middle class. How would you join? Easy, by the observer. So I bought the observer, struggled with the adverts, took my supplements like a good little boy. And here I am, happily, almost proudly, living in Hampstead, London, NW2. <laughs> And how did we care about people? <clears throat> Above all, we care about ourselves. <laughs> but it's not all hedonism and Hampstead kiddies. Last night we were all out demonstrating the Men Against Sexism group outside the Punch and Judy show in the community centre. <laughs> so much work to be done. <laughs> And tomorrow night, we're all out on picket duty, the silent vigil outside the white sugar factory in Croydon. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. Yes, I'm going to do it. You're not going to yeah, stop me. Done. You're never going to stop we're on. me. We're telling you to go. Stop. stop. Good night. <laughs> Archie. How are you? How are you, Archie? We were just talking about you. We were just saying you are one of our favourite comedians. Right. When do I get paid? It's right you should ask that, Archie. When do I get paid? Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm going to introduce the next act now. And um, this next act has been flown in at absolutely no expense and absolutely no worms. What do you think of that? A pound? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, a big warm comic ship welcome. Yeah, it sounds like a big warm comic ship welcome. But ladies and gentlemen, the outer limits! Archie, thanks a lot. You're a top lady. Uh, good evening, we are the Outer Limits. Yeah. So, uh, relax. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Kenneth. A 
photographer. Uh, I take pictures of little girls. Sometimes these pictures get in the magazines. Page three. My friends call me Lady Di, because I like working with children. Where are we on? We're on after him. Come back, you twat! You're giving it all away! I'll tell you what's going to be very big money soon. Fibre optics. <laughs> then bendy tubes that doctors look down. <laughs> the inside pictures. Chicky shots of the ovaries. <laughs> Full frontal shots of the fallopian tubes. Unborn children discovering for the first time the full sensuality of their partially formed bodies. <laughs> Fiber optics. Uh... Stop shouting! I'm not shouting! You're supposed to whisper! Why did you fucking whisper? There's a lot of audience out there! You're giving it all away! You'll lose the element of surprise! You twat! Tonight. Okay, here we go now. Little thirty things. Come up your legs. Get down, you bastards! Hey. They come through the walls and put wires in your head. You know, right? I don't mind anyway. What me? Paranoid? Mm. Okay, nice warm feeling. Here, didn't you kill my brother? Jack. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, a big welcome, please, for the Dangerous Brothers. I'm 
Romania, didn't he? Yeah, I couldn't be helped out. Where's he got any arms? Oh, fuck all arms! Oh, so how's he gonna press the buttons? Exactly! Fuck! <laughs> oh, all right, maybe he jumped up and nutted the button. He's got fuck all legs either. All right, maybe he pecks it with his beak. <laughs> oh, fucking beak. The goose's beak. The French goose with the beret. in a lift with his beak, and the lift goes up and down. What's that? <laughs> we've got him, we've got him. I got the I'm bloody husband! Fucking can't you ain't a fucking bollocks and oh Mr. Swerry, fucking can't you ain't a in your box, Mr. Swerry, fucking can't you ain't a fucking <laughs> oh. <laughs> John Paul starts to what I fucking can, eh? <laughs> what I fucking can, we ain't him round our way. You know why? You know why? Because he knows fuck all about a cortina, that's why. <laughs> Pardon my French. Fucking can you wait a you fucking can you knock it on the head? I don't have to remember any of this now because it's all written on the inside of my hat. Next piece, the next piece is a Cockney Mod performance art dance piece. It's titled, a phrase often heard in Alan Minter Cantery. It's called, Hello, John Got a New Motor. <laughs> Mark Freak, Tina, Work Wall Tires, Doggy on the Back Shelf, Names on the Windscreen, Sven and Kierkegaard. <laughs> and you can join in with the words, right, if you're telepathic, that is. And there's a quick joke for all you telepaths. <laughs> It, hey, hey, a bit fucking risque, like, you know what I mean? Basically politically sound, right? Hang on, that's coming off, must get a smaller red, right? Cockney Mob Performance Art Dance Piece entitled Hello John Got a New Motor, you fucking cunt. A one, two, a one, two, three, four, Hello John Got a New Motor, Hello John Got a New Motor. You go to spend a mess on the carpet, you go to spend a mess on the carpet. He lost his bottle in Barnsley, he lost his bottle in Barnsley. He's an Avon representative, he's an Avon representative. Hello John Got a New Motor. Hello, John got in your mouth! Hello, John got in your mouth! A bollocks, you can't say Where's she gone?
Thank you. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. That is our little story. There has to be a moral somewhere, but fuck knows where it is. Still, time has passed, and we know these people a little better. And where are your troubles now? They are outside. Where is your de cheval turned over and burnt, or the Snoopy stickers trampled into the ground? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to introduce you to a band I met at Nebworth. A big welcome, please, for Alexis Midnight Runners. Hello, Nebworth. Okay. Hey. Woo. All right. Woo. Okay. All right. Woo. Okay. All right. Hey. Woo. All right. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, there's been a lot of racial trouble in the world these days, you know? Blacks and whites, Russians and Afghans. I don't know why they pick on them, I think they're fucking nice dogs. Well, there's only one device that can solve all this racial conflict. What is it? Is it a big melting pot? No! Is it a model railway set? No! Is it a pop-up toaster? Yes! No, Joe! You're always searching for a pop-up toaster! <laughs> of a poster about being the color of a new straw for time. You know, in white times, you come out brown. Pop up, pop up, pop up toasters. You hit the roof and then you spin around. Pop up, pop up, pop up toasters. You can keep on up and then your old style reach them. Social workers and left-wing teachers. Politicians and the old slimy creatures. I hope my lead you to more favorites. Now, obviously, you can't solve the world's racial problems by singing along with a simplistic fucking lyric contained in a song. Oh, no, you got to do the dance as well. So I want everybody to do the pop-up toaster. Now, one, you got to think of yourself as a slice of bread. You can be wholemeal, I don't mind. Two, you got to put your hand on your head. That's the round thing on the top of your neck where all the shit comes out. Three, you got to press down. And then four, you got to jump up in the air and go boing. Oh. One, think bread. <laughs> 